Hi, I'm John Teal, founder of Predictable Designs and the Hardware Academy. In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to emissions regulatory requirements for new electronic products. In the US, this primarily means FCC certification or authorization, and for other countries, they have their own regulatory requirements, although they typically will closely mirror those of the FCC requirements in the US. This video is actually just one lesson from an entire course that I teach in the Hardware Academy, where I cover all the different regulatory requirements and go into great detail about the, the process that you need to follow to get your, your product certified so that it can be uh, sold and available on the market. The first type of electrical certification or regulatory requirements that we're going to look at is for the emissions authorization. I'm going to, in this course, I'm going to focus mostly for the emissions requirements. I'm going to focus on the FCC, which is the federal agency in the U.S. that oversees emissions authorization and requirements. And even though FCC certification will only apply to the U.S., most other regions in the world, whether that be Europe or Canada or Australia, wherever, they, they tend to follow the FCC requirements pretty closely. You'll still need separate authorization or certification in those areas, but if you can obtain FCC authorization, then most likely uh, the, the requirements are going to be very similar for other regions. First of all, any product that that oscillates above 9 kilohertz is going to require FCC radiated emissions authorization. It, it doesn't have to be a product that has a, a wireless radio in it. It can be something really simple and it's it's most products are going to have something in there oscillating above 9 kilohertz. It, it's pretty rare for a product that, at least from my experience, did not have some circuit in it oscillating at at least 9 kilohertz. If it has any type of microcontroller or microprocessor, then it, it's going to be oscillating in megahertz or gigahertz. And it's uh, going to be rare that you're ever going to find anything that's going to be oscillating less than 9 kilohertz. For most products, you're just going to need to assume that you're going to require some type of FCC authorization. There are two types of products in the eyes of emissions uh, requirements or authorization, and these are licensed or unlicensed products. For instance, police radios or ham operators, those are licensed pro products or networks because you have to have a license to be able to be a ham operator or a, have a police uh, a police radio that you can transmit on. Those are examples of licensed. But for most products that we're, we're going to be talking about in this course, they're going to be unlicensed. So these are all the wireless devices that all of us use every day, whether that be Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cellular, um, these are all different wireless forms of communication that are unlicensed. We don't have to have a, a special license to have your Bluetooth product. That's what we're going to focus on because licensed products tend to have their entirely different set of requirements um, in regards to emission. The FCC has an, a completely different section of the code that are for licensed products versus unlicensed products. We're going to focus on the unlicensed. Then there are two classes of what the FCC refers to as digital circuits. So these digital circuits are non-radios, your, your microcontroller, all the other parts of your circuit that aren't purposely emitting electromagnetic uh, radiation. And so these are classified in two different classes. Uh, there's class A, which is for industrial products, and then there's class B for consumer products. Class B, which is for consumer products, has much stricter requirements than an industrial product because in individual consumers are using it. You, It's not going to be in a controlled environment like in a factory. So the emissions uh, limits are going to be much lower. Uh, what's allowed, uh, allowable emissions are going to be much lower for something that is uh, certified or authorized as a class B versus a class A. And that even being said, most industrial products, they, they start off with the intention of, of trying to get class B uh, classification because that's going to just give them bragging rights that they, they have uh, less emissions. But if they don't meet that, those requirements, then they will commonly fall back to uh, just being considered a class A device with the higher emissions. And then we have part 15 versus part 18. 
And what this is referring to is the Code of Federal Regulations in the U.S. So it's a huge document with all these federal regulations. And there are different uh, sections. There's a section 47 where most of this falls under. And then there are different subsections or parts to that section 47. Part 15 is what is the, the part of the code that's going to govern most of the products that we're going to be talking about. Part 18 is a special part of the code that is specifically for products that are using radio frequency RF energy to do some type of work, not just transmitting information, but doing some type of, some type of work using that RF energy. There are three different types of radiated emissions requirements from the FCC. First of all, let me specify there are two types of emissions. There are radiated emissions. This is RF, electromagnetic energy that's being radiated into space. So that's radiated uh, emissions. And then we'll also talk about conducted emissions, and that's when you have RF energy going in a, a wire, a connector of some sort. The, the three types of radiate emissions are, the first type is called an incidental radiator. And these are, we're not, I'm not going to spend hardly any time on this because it's, it's very rare that this applies to most products that, that I see. An incidental radiator is, is something really simple like a, a mechanical switch or a DC motor. Something that in no way should be intentionally producing radio frequency energy. These types of products are, are very lightly regulated. Uh, there's no certification process. It's really lightly regulated, but rarely, most of the, that tends to be more for if you're developing a, a new component. Most of the products I see in the academy are not people developing a, a new mechanical light switch. They're obviously much more complex than that. The two types of Emissions authorization that we're going to focus on are non-intentional radiator and intentional radiator. They're, they're somewhat descriptive in their names. An intentional radiator is something that is intentionally radiate, radiating RF or electromagnetic uh, energy out of the part. Something that has any wireless radio that has a transmit function, whether that be Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cellular, Zigbee, all of those are intentionally radiating RF energy out of side of the product. With that being said, those, those, just because you're using Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or Zigbee or any of these doesn't mean your product would be classified as an intentional radiator. Uh, I'm just giving you more the, the description of what is meant by an intentional radiator. I know it's a little confusing, but there are, there are basically ways to have your product, even though it's intentionally radiating RF, there are ways to have it classified as a non-intentional radiator. And I'm going to go into more detail on that. But an intentional radiator is something that is intentionally radiating RF energy. A non-intentional radiator is something that's not intentionally radiating the RF energy, but it just does it of a byproduct of its normal function. For instance, let's just say you have a product with a microcontroller. No wireless radios. Let's just say you have a microcontroller and an accelerometer. Well, that, even though you're, there's nothing in there that you're not using Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or cellular, so you're not intentionally wanting to make your product wireless, but still it's going to radiate RF energy. If you have a microcontroller running at a few megahertz, that's going to output, that's going to radiate some RF energy. But it's not intentional. The FCC isn't quite as concerned because obviously if you're intentionally radiating it, then you're going to probably radiate a lot more and the likelihood of your product interfering with other forms of communication is going to be a lot, a lot greater. It's, if your product is classified as an intentional radiator, it's a, it's a much stricter process to get it authorized. And in fact, and I'm going to go into detail on this, but in fact, that is sort of the – one of the reasons I, I don't want to always use the word certification because the FCC actually has different levels of authorization. And it's only intentional radiators that require the full certification approval process from the FCC. So that's that's one of the main differentiators. And that's that's why it's, it's very much uh, to your benefit if you can – 
design your product so that it can be classified as a non-intentional radiator because that's just going to uh, drastically reduce the complexity and the cost of getting the necessary authorizations. Then, as I had mentioned, in addition to radiated emissions, there are also conducted emissions. This is going to be required if your product uses is plugs into uses AC power, even if you're using, even if you have an AC to DC converter, if it's, con if it connects into an AC outlet, you're going to have to have it, you're going to have to pass conducted emissions testing because they're wanting to make sure that you're not feeding RF energy back into the AC line. And what you'll commonly see on like an AC D adapter, AC DC adapter on the DC side, you'll see it like a ferrite B, which is, is used to suppress these conducted emissions. That's usually a simple way to make sure that you don't have any problems with conducted emissions. But if it's, uh, that's just something to also keep in mind. It's not necessarily, it's not nearly as complicated typically as radiated emissions, but definitely you want to keep in mind that conducted emissions are also a, a requirement if you connect into an AC line, either directly or indirectly through an AC DC adapter. And then as I previously mentioned, the, we're, we're focusing really on the FCC requirements. First of all, because it's the one I, I know the best being based in the U S it's the one that I know the best. And then also just because the, the U S is the world's largest economy. Most of the other areas around the world have very much based their requirements on the FCC requirements because it would just create a, a nightmare for uh, product companies. If, if they were completely different uh, requirements for or for every different country that's that would just create a, a lot of headaches so and most there are differences and you still have to have it authorized and certified in your own country or region because the FCC is just purely that's a, a US federal agency it has no no uh, bearing in other countries obviously so that's uh just something to keep in mind but for like the European Union, it's going to be CE marking is most is is going to be the overall certification that you're going to require. And it, specifically, there's this uh, CISPR 22 and EN 55022, which are the standards that are required for CE marking that are related to emissions authorization and testing. But like I said, it's going to be very similar to FCC. You'll have to file all the paperwork separately for each country, but in most cases, you're going to be able to use the, the same test, uh, testing r report or results that, that you used for getting your FCC authorization. Okay, that's it for this video. If you found this topic to be helpful, then I su suggest that you check out the Hardware Academy and inside as a member of the Academy, you can access the entire in-depth course on regulatory requirements for new electronic products.